Good evening, everyone, and welcome to uh, the Laurier Bachelor of Education Information Session. Uh, we're happy to have you join us this evening. Uh, you're going to hear from some different panelists this evening and get lots of information about applying to the Laurier Bachelor of Education. So to start, uh, my name is Jennifer Holm. I am the Bachelor of Education Program Coordinator, and I'm going to be the moderator for this evening. You're going to meet some of the other panelists, and then there's some people who are going to be behind the scenes answering your questions. This evening, we'll spend about an hour talking about the program and why you might want to apply to our program. And then we'll end with the last half hour of asking question, or answering questions live, but feel free to ask your questions in the chat as we go through, and we have people who are answering them. And then we'll ask a few questions that a lot of people have answered live. So some of them will be marked as answered at the end of the session. So thank you very much for considering our teacher education program, and we hope that you enjoy learning more about why Laurier would be a fantastic place for you to get your teacher education. To begin, we wish to acknowledge that the land on which we gather at Laurier as the Faculty of Education, the Waterloo Campus, and the Brantford Campus for thousands of years has been the traditional land of the Anishinaabe, the Haudenosaunee, and the neutral peoples. Today, this meeting place is still the home for many Indigenous people from across Turtle Island, and we are grateful to have the opportunity to live, work, and play on this land. So again, welcome. And I'd like to turn this over to our Dean, Dr. Maria Cantalini-Williams, to tell you a little bit about our program. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Holm, and uh, thank you to everyone participating tonight. We're excited that you're interested in applying to the teacher education program, otherwise known as the BEd program at Wilfrid Laurier University. I have been Dean since July, 2019, and it's been a pleasure to serve our faculty. We have amazing staff. You will meet some of our staff today. They have worked in school boards and they have so much expertise and uh, partnerships with our local boards. We also have faculty, you'll meet some today who have uh, much experience and also research uh, backgrounds in many different areas. Dr. Holm is a, a math specialist and you'll meet other faculty. We um, are fortunate to have wonderful students who are passionate and dedicated to this profession of teaching. And so together our community is thriving. I uh, myself started out as a grade one teacher many, many years ago. I had the pleasure of working uh, in schools, in school boards as a program consultant. Um, I worked at the Brantford campus in the concurrent education program there. So I can attest to the wonderful features of both the Waterloo campus and the Brantford campus programs. So I welcome you and uh, I hope that we can actually welcome you in person in September, 2023. And this program is very uh, flexible. It's very uh, highly claimed across the province and uh, even nationally. We have many graduates who have gone on to do wonderful things, and they really are a testament to the strength of our program. So thank you so much for your interest tonight, and uh, we hope to see you soon. We will look carefully for your applications and hope to answer all your questions. Thank you. Uh, right. Uh, so just to give you an overview, it's a two-year program at Laurier. It's delivered over fall term, uh, four terms, so fall and winter, uh, both years. And we don't have regular classes in the spring term, but we have some optional electives that you could possibly take in between the semesters. But the only two ter or the only four terms that you would have to do would be fall and winter in both year one and year two. We have two divisions, primary junior, and we also have a primary junior FSL focused program, as well as the junior intermediate program. And we offer several different teachable subjects. 
So you'll see that some of the teachables are offered at both Waterloo or Brantford, so the W or BR, and some of them are only at Brantford, such as geography and history. Um, the only one that's only offered at Waterloo is mathematics. The rest of our teachables are offered at both campuses. So that would be English, French as a second language, health and physical education, a science general teachable, and vocal and instrumental music. So with our program framework, we start in the first term with building teaching foundations and giving you an overview of what you would need as a teacher so that you can start out in your placements. The second semester, so the winter of year one, is around building your content knowledge and expanding your understanding of different subjects in the program and that you would need for as a teacher in an Ontario school. In the fall of year two, we start with reaching every learner and we look at different diversity pieces and helping to support all the learners in your classrooms. And then your final semester, so winter of year two, is about making connections and really thinking about how to take everything you've learned over the past three terms and putting it into practice with your schools. And you'll spend a significant amount of time in that last semester in classrooms as you'll learn during the practicum portion of this presentation. So there's some really big highlights of why our Bachelor of Education program is so excellent. So the one piece is that the strong theory to practice connections. So the professional learning seminar is a course that you would take in year one and then a single course in year two. And this is about connecting what you're learning in your practicums to what you're learning at the university and getting a chance to discuss with your peers and learn from professionals about the teaching practice. We also have a diversity series as part of our Bachelor of Education program. This includes two special education courses, a focus on mental health, looking at English language learners, Indigenous topics, and looking at a course on equity, diversity, and inclusion. Throughout the program, we talk about reaching all learners and we integrate issues related to equity and diversity throughout the program. But then we also have specialized courses where you can really concentrate and learn about applying this knowledge. All of our courses are integrated using technology, collaboration, communication, critical and creative thinking, and we integrate them with each subject matter in order to create a dynamic learning environment. We also have many awesome electives. These are just some of the many different electives that we have focusing on supporting your journey through the program, but also expanding your interests into other pieces that might be of interest to you. We're working on adding some new electives and updating some of our current electives. So some of these may change slightly by the time you get in, but all focusing on keeping your practices recent. So learning more about the issues that are facing today's teachers. Our program works on responding to the Truth and Reconciliation Commission's calls to action, and we're committed to decolonizing our practices by first and foremost recognizing and accepting the reality of Canada's colonial history. We're also committed to indigenizing our curricula and educational practices. We begin this process by dialoguing with our Indigenous community partners and with a good heart and mind, indigenize our practices by infusing Indigenous content, teaching worldviews, knowledges, and perspectives in all courses. You'll see as you work through the Bachelor of Education program that each course has a specific statement in their course syllabus on how they integrate First Nations, Métis, and Inuit topics, worldviews, knowledges, and perspectives. We do also offer entrance scholarships for Indigenous students who self-identify on their applications. So we make sure to create a welcoming environment for all Indigenous students, faculty, and staff. So this is the part where I would turn it over to Ben Carbon, who is a year two PJ. Uh, you'll see, I'm gonna read his quote. You see the lovely picture of him working with students. Uh, but Ben could not be here. He let me know just before this started. He has an interview right now, and he said I could share that with all of you. 
that um, being part of the Laurier program, he already has been hired by one board and he now has a second interview with another board um, and he hasn't even graduated yet. He's in the fall of year two. So what he has said that he'd like to share with you is the program at Laurier has been really wonderful. If I'm honest, when I applied, I did so because it was close to my home. I didn't know much about the program. Undoubtedly, the best part of this program is the amount of time you get in placement. This helps you make more meaningful connections with students and your associate teachers. Laurier has connections with so many boards in the area, wherever you live or want to teach in the future. The more time you spend in the classroom, the more you can put theory into practice and the more you can learn from the various situations you encounter. I'm leaving the program excited about my future as an educator and feeling ready for all the exciting opportunities that are coming my way. So he wanted to share those with you and he's sorry he couldn't be here, but couldn't turn down an interview, so that's amazing. So just another reason why Laurier is so highly sought after, our graduates are also highly sought after by school boards, um, and many of our teacher candidates have already gotten job interviews and positions in their local school boards before they've even graduated. So now we're gonna talk a little bit about the campuses. So um, as Dr. Cantalini Williams mentioned, we do have two campuses. Uh, so we're gonna talk a little bit about the Waterloo campus and introduce you to that. And then a little about the Brantford campus. So to start with, where is the Faculty of Edu Education located? This is a map of the Waterloo campus. And our Faculty of Education is the office is in the Bricker Academic Building on the third floor. And this is an image of the building from the parking lot. Uh, on the Waterloo campus, um, many of our first year courses are in flex are flexible learning classroom spaces so that we can have time to have discussions and uh, interact with each other and learn from our peers, lots of collaborative whiteboards, uh, and spaces so they can, we can have some flexible learning and enjoy uh, each other and learning from colleagues. So many of our classes are in these classrooms uh, in your first year. The Fred Nichols Campus Center is uh, one of the perks of being on the Waterloo campus. This is where you'd find the bookstore, the Students' Union, the Office of Student Affairs, the food court, a 24-hour lounge, and Wilf's Restaurant are all in this building. As well, there's a wonderful athletic center that you become a member of as you uh, join uh, our university. There's a fitness center, there's women's only program hours, group exercise, dance and aerobic studios. There's an Olympic sized pool, a rock climbing wall, squash courts, and sports programs. So lots of great benefits to being a student at Laurier. Now the Brantford campus um, is located here. This is the Brantford map. So this is the Carnegie building. Uh, our offices are on the lower, lower level of the Carnegie building. And this is a, an image from the street uh, you might not recognize the street if I backed out a little bit. It was in a very famous TV show just recently this season. Uh, but there are lots of amenities and great pieces on the Brantford campus as well. Uh, you'll see the student union entrance. There is a specific student union on the Brantford campus. The picture in the middle is of Service Laurier. And then on the right is the Indigenous Student Center, all of them very comfortably located close to the building where the Faculty of Education courses will mainly take place. Um, as a member or as a student on the Brantford campus, you get a YMCA, and I just realized it is not a YCMA, it is a YMCA membership, my apologies for the typo. Um, and this booth boasts a lot of really cool uh, incentives for you. They have an aquatic center, uh, inclusive member change rooms, child mining, a youth zone, gym space, which you would get to use as part of your um, health and physical education courses. There's a fitness center with state-of-the-art stretching, small group training, cable machines, and cardio equipment. There's health intake consultation rooms, studios, multi-purpose spaces, and there is a Laurier only student lounge housed within the YMCA. And all of that membership is part of being a Brantford student. 
We do have um, great learning spaces for our cohorts. Uh, we do have a cohort model at the Brantford campus. So you would spend, if you were in the PJ program, for example, you would spend um, a significant amount of your courses with just the PJs, and then some of them blended with the JIs. So you would follow each other through all four semesters so you can create that tight-knit community. Uh, so that would be on the Brantford campus. And you can see some images of the lovely classrooms that we have, which uh, do also have some flexible learning spaces too. So um, the admissions requirements you can find on our admissions website, and you can look at how do you submit all of your pieces and more about the different parts of the application process. In order to assess your application, we look at both GPA. So there's a minimum GPA requirement of 70% on the last 10 credits or 20 half credits and an experience profile, which is due December 2nd, 2022, or December 6th, my apologies. Um, so both of these are given equal weight on your application. So it's important to make sure that you fill out your experience profile. So three-year degrees are accepted. Um, however, four-year degrees receive extra points. Master's degrees also receive extra points. Degrees from colleges are considered on a case-by-case -case basis. There are no specific requirements for PJ, but there are extra points for courses in English, math, French, and science when except, exploring your application, uh, your undergraduate, uh, sorry, I am drawing a blank on the word, uh, degrees, when you submit your degrees, sorry. Um, extra points are given for Laurier students who completed the education minor, um, and extra points are added to the GPA calculation for a maximum of six points. For JI, you need to have three full credits or six half credits in your teachable subject, and please check the website for additional subject-specific requirements. Your proof of degree must be received by the end of June in order to keep your offer to the uh, program. The experience profile is balanced with your academic grades. It's scored by experienced teachers and administrators. You complete and submit it online. Uh, please include uh, two references, but no reference letters. Uh, there is a 570 character limit, uh, including spaces for each of the questions. So the questions for the experience profile are to describe your motivations for applying to the Laurier Bachelor of Education program and entering the teaching profession. And then explain how your personal background and lived experiences will influence your future role as an effective and empathetic educator, including any vo relevant volunteer or employment activities. So you do have a limited amount of characters, but please be very specific and detailed about your activities that have positioned you to be a good candidate in our teacher education program. So I'm going to introduce Sarah now, who is a year one in the primary junior program at Branford, to tell you a little bit about why she decided to apply to Laurier. Sarah? Thank you, Jennifer. Hi, everyone. I'm Sarah, um, and I am located on the Branford campus. Personally, I chose this program because I did my undergrad at Laurier as well, and I also fell in love with just the small cohort sizes and definitely enjoyed my time here at the program. Um, all the faculty are really amazing and truly care about all the students, all replacements. They work really hard to support us through that as well. And all the atmosphere within all of our courses has just been absolutely amazing. Definitely thrilled that I've chosen the Brantford campus as well um, and enjoy the program. Thank you, Sarah. And I'm sure Sarah wouldn't mind answering your specific questions if you ask them in the chat about a student perspective of being in this program. So um, part, if you are applying to be part of the FSL focus at either the junior intermediate as the French teachable or the primary junior French as a second language focus, you must complete a mandatory French proficiency assessment as part of the admissions process. This assessment is usually held in January 
and includes a written test and an oral component. There is a fee required for testing. The French proficiency test is in an online format, however. So please make sure uh, you watch your emails for that information about when your assessment is, uh, since that is part of the application process if you are applying to either the PJ FSL or the JI French Teachable. So the PJ FSL is a um, new uh, program here at Laurier. This is the second year we've offered it. Um, the successful completion of a French language proficiency assessment is administered by Laurier. Um, you need to have evidence of French language proficiency by either a completion of five one semester undergraduate courses in French with at least a B minus average. Of those courses, only two may be at the first year level. In addition, a maximum of two one semester courses in French translation may be counted toward the five courses. It is recommended that applicants present a combination of courses in French language, grammar, composition, literature, and culture for admissions consideration. Or you can show a completion of one semester long undergraduate course in French at the three or 400 level and no com courses completed at the one or 200 level. This course must be taught in French, however, the option is intended for fluent French speakers. Or if you have um, a DELF level B2, you may use that uh, to show successful uh, evidence of your French language proficiency, or if you create, completed your university degree at a Francophone institution, that would show evidence of your French language proficiency. So for the JI French Teachable, at least three full credits in French are required, including one full credit in French written language or grammar, a half credit in French, French Canadian and or Francophone literature, a half credit in French, French Canadian and or Francophone culture. Additional admission consideration is given for each half credit course beyond the three full credits required to a maximum of five credits. Applicants are required to demonstrate oral and written fluency. Applicants will be invited to complete the French proficiency assessment after they apply. The test is typically held in January. Um, and it used to be on site, it is now online, however. So I'm now going to introduce Dr. Tara Lynn Shuffle. She is our literacy expert here at the faculty to tell you a little bit about the literacy program here as part of the teacher education program. Good evening, everyone. I'm excited to uh, chat with you a little bit tonight. I wanted to let you know that you'll take two literacy focused method courses over your two years. So each fall of year one and fall of year two, um, whether you're in PJ or JI, you'll have a literacy focused course that will explore in year one foundational literacy concepts and responsive pedagogical practices. And then in year two will be a chance to really expand and dig into those even further. And then if you have a teachable as well, you'll have additional courses. All of your literacy courses take a multi-literacies approach. So we view literacies as multi-dimensional, multimodal, so um, being more than just reading and writing, multilingual, situational, and then also complex. We'll look at literacy through a social justice stance with a, a focus on rich literature, and we'll consider both the acquisition of skills and strategies, but also opportunities for building identities and belonging through literacy. Your classes will be organized using a workshop format. So uh, we really value your participation as you can uh, you know, think about and take on um, your practice as an emerging literacy educator. You'll be invited to join in conversation about literacy concepts, observe, try out strategies, join in small and large group discussions and work collaboratively as well. Assignments will focus on planning and assessment, but you'll also um, be able to reflect and make meaning in relation to our course discussions and readings and your practicum experience as well as you think about what it means to be a literacy educator. And you'll have the opportunity to tie in observations and questions from your practicum, which is a wonderful feature of Laurier's program as already has been mentioned this evening. And I just wanna end by saying, um, your instructors, including myself, we see ourselves as passionate literacy educators and lifelong learners ourselves. And we're just really excited to share our classroom teaching and research experiences with you. Thanks everyone.
Thank you. Um, so I am the math education expert. So uh, not only do we have a strong literacy program, we also have a strong mathematics education program here. So as a teacher candidate at Gloria Bachelor of Education, you would take two required math courses, whether you're PJ or JI. You take one on the foundations of math education in year one and a way to extend the math education in year two. So we really focus in year one on developing the competencies that will help make you a successful math teacher. So no matter what your background is in mathematics, we work on talking about those experiences and how those lived experiences can help support you as a math teacher. So whether you're a PJ or a JI, you will still take these courses and we create a supportive environment to help grow and learn together. So even if you're afraid of mathematics right now or you love mathematics, these courses are designed to help support your development to make you into the best math teacher that we can possibly do. Uh, so they have become really important courses and we've just restructured them a little bit so that we can make sure to give you a really great experience that is reflective of the Ontario curriculum, reflective of the current classroom environment uh, to help support you in this journey over the two years. So I am now going to turn over to Gary Slater. He is our manager of experiential learning, and he's going to give you lots of information on the wonderful practicum placements that are part of the Laurier Bachelor of Education. Thanks, Jennifer, and good evening, everybody. Uh, I'm also pleased to be here tonight to talk about our program and specifically around our practicum placements that we offer. And uh, what, what I think you'll see is that we do offer a somewhat unique program around our practicum, and it, it is different depending on the university you look at. So I'll talk, tell you about Laurier's uh, extensive practicum and alternative placements tonight. First of all, we have uh, two different uh, school placements. So in first year, you'll be placed in one school and you'll be placed in that school for the full year. It's our goal to have you ha be in one classroom throughout the fall term and in the winter term be in a different classroom, but again, within that same school. What this does is it allows you to be in the school, get very immersed in the school so you can be part of the culture and on an ongoing basis, be connected to the school. So you're not just connected when you're in your block placements, but as I'll outline in just a minute, you're also in the schools one day per week while you're in classes at the faculty. So you can get involved in clubs and things that happen on a regular basis. There are other opportunities that will come up in the school for you to be participating in. So we really do try to build a, a sense of community between our teacher candidates and our school partner schools. So as I mentioned, we have weekly practicum days. This year they're on Mondays and that can change, but one day a week you go into the school and you can get involved in not just the classroom where you've been placed for your practicum block, which is a multi-week placement that happens throughout the year, but you can also get involved in other areas. So schools will often have specialized personnel in them and you might be able to access those people and spend time with them as well on those practicum days. So lots of flexibility around what, this, what those days look like. And then you also have your block placements. And those block placements are where you uh, really get immersed with one classroom, with one associate teacher. And at that point, you're really looking at the application of all the theory that you've learned at the faculty what does that actually look like when you get to the classroom and you start being a practicing teacher? So that is our overview of the practicum. The other placement that we have, and this happens in year one, we call it our alternative placement. And so that I'll describe in a few minutes as well. But in total, you'll see that we have approximately 140 to 150 practicum days, including those days and blocks and the alternative placement. The College of Teachers requires 80. So you can see that we have a lot more days of practicum. And Ben even mentioned that uh, in his short uh, message to you at the beginning of the presentation, 
that there's a lot of time that you actually spend in the school doing the work of a teacher. A sample placement will look something like this. So you'll have your weekly practicum days and those will start at some point in the fall and they will carry on through to the end of the year, the school the school board year or the school year of the university. So you, you're, you're sorry, not the school board, but the university's year. So while you're in class, you're also one day per week at your school placement. In the fall of the first year, you'll have a two week observation block. So you'll be assigned to a school, assigned to an associate teacher in a classroom, and you'll go in just on an observation basis, interacting with the class, getting involved. But in that time period, there's no expectation that you're actually planning and leading a lesson. However, lots of teacher candidates take that opportunity to work with their associate teachers, and they do things with the whole class, with small groups and individual students. Later in the first term, you'll have a three-week teaching block. It's also part of that first practicum. And in that block, you'll start off again observing and moving up to teaching a quarter of the teaching day for that teacher. So you're moving up to about 25% of the teacher's day. At the end of year one, you will have a second practicum, practicum two, and that's again a three-week block. And in that block, you start off the practicum teaching at 25% and move up to half time. So you're teaching approximately half of every day by the midpoint of that three week block until the end. So by the end of year one, you're, you're teaching up to about half time. Another placement that I mentioned earlier is the alternative placement. I'm gonna go into a bit more detail again shortly, but it happens at the end of year one. And it usually is about a two to three week placement or it could be 60 to 90 hours, roughly 20 to 30 hours per week. Again, we'll just pin that for a minute and I'll come back to that. In year two, again, you'll have weekly practicum days. Your practicum three is in the fall. It's a two week block. And in that block, you'll move from 50 to 75% of teaching time. Later in the fall, you'll move into practicum four, which is a three week block and you'll teach 75 to 100% of the time. So by December of, of year two, you are teaching full-time in your practicum classroom. A really unique feature of our program is our practicum five, and it's a 10-week block in the, in the winter term of second year. So you'll come to the faculty for the first part of that term, five to six weeks, for classes. At that point, practicum five starts, and you'll be in one school in that same school in one classroom for 10 weeks. During that time, you'll teach 100% of the day for four solid weeks, and that has to occur in the first six weeks. So you might take a week and not do teaching, and then you might do four solid weeks, and then you have another week. So you have that six week period to fit those four weeks of 100% teaching in. And then there are four more weeks, which function very much like those practicum days where you can get involved in any area of the school that you feel that over your two years, you would like extra time in, you would like to spend time. If you haven't been in kindergarten and that's something you really want to experience, you can make arrangements to spend time in a kindergarten classroom. You could spend time in a different grade level that you haven't been in. If you haven't been in a multi-grade classroom, you could try and arrange for that. So there's lots of options and things that you can do during that last four weeks of that practicum five. This is just a uh, visual that shows what that looks like. We call it a gradual release of responsibility over time. So you start on the left side of the screen at the beginning of year one, and in that first practicum, move up to 25% teaching. In practicum two, at the end of year one, you move up to 50%. In practicum three, at the beginning of year two, you go from 50 to 75%. Practicum four, in that last part of that first term, for up to 100%. And then again, in practicum five, doing a full 100% teaching for four solid weeks. I want to talk to you a little bit about our partner boards. And again, you'll have seen a map at the beginning which showed where Waterloo and Brantford are located. 
So in the picture on the left in the purple square, you can see where we are in Ontario. And the graphic to the right is a blow up of that square. And you can see in purple where our partner boards are. So to the very left of that big graphic would be Lake Huron. And north of that would be Georgian Bay. To the right side would be the Toronto area, so the GTA. And then uh, to the left in the bottom left is heading down towards London and Windsor. So we are right in the middle there. All of our partner boards are connected in that purple space. So on the next slide, I'll, tell, I'll talk to you about exactly which boards we partner with. So you can see the list of partner boards here on the right. And for every area that we are in, we have both the public board and what's called the coterminous board, which is the Catholic board. So both boards are coterminous and they overlay the same geographic areas. So Avon Maitland and here on Perth are sort of think of Stratford up to Godrich, that area. Grand Erie, Brant Haldeman, Norfolk Catholic are Brantford area and the city of Brantford down to Lake Erie. Halton and Halton Catholic would be our most easterly boards and they are just to this side, to the, to the east, but just this side of, of uh, Peel District, which is Mississauga area. Hamilton Wentworth and Hamilton Wentworth Catholic are in the Hamilton area. Upper Grand and Wellington Catholic are in two different uh, counties, Wellington County and Dufferin County. So just to the east of Waterloo and then around Laurier itself is the Waterloo Region District School Board and Waterloo Catholic. Those are the only partner boards where we have student placements. So if you're a person who lives somewhere else in the province, one of you, all of your placements will happen within these boards. So we don't have placements outside of this space. I'm going to talk to you a little bit about the alternative placement now, which I've mentioned a couple of times. The alternative placement happens in year one. And as I mentioned earlier, it's about 60 to 90 hours. And over the last couple of years, we've adjusted our program to allow students to complete this placement if they wish in either that two or three week block at the end of the year one, or space it out starting in the fall all the way through the winter. So maybe doing a few hours a week that all together add up to that 60 to 90 hours. So you can choose which model you want to follow. And these placements are a little bit different than a classroom placement. In fact, they are not in the K-12 public education system. So it's not a placement that you would find in a school. It's somewhere else. Some of our placements, most of them, to be in, in fact, are local. So where you live, these could be in your hometown if you don't live in the Kitchener-Waterloo or in any of the geographic boards that we're connected with. And we also have some international options each year. We have it during COVID, but we are uh, running international options this year. I'll tell you a little bit about that too. These positions are volunteer and something about them has to have a significant connection to either education, human development or community service. So you might think about high school and you might think about the community service work you did there. This is something that's similar to that, but has an education focus to it. So just some examples. And sometimes when I talk about this, uh, the chat lights up with, oh, would this count as an experience? And what we will do is when you get uh, accepted to the faculty, we run a, a, a seminar just like this on the alternative placement. We provide you lots of details of what it looks like. But some examples of what students have done in the past is they've worked at outdoor education centers. So maybe that's with your local conservation area. They run education programs and maybe school boards bring the students to that outdoor education center. And our students are there as volunteer presenters and teachers and working with the students there. We have uh, had students go to local museums and you can see a picture of the museum in Kitchener Waterloo there as a, one of our partner sites where students can do a placement. And they would have different roles in a museum, obviously, than they would in an outdoor education center. 
but it's always a connection. It's always volunteer, and there's a connection to education and that community service work. Lots of our students work in the extra supports that exist in the community for special education services. So they will find a volunteer position with the Autism Society or a Learning Disabilities Network or something like that that's connected with education and it helps to support the learning that's happened at the faculty. Private schools offer a very different experience in some cases. In some cases, they don't run the Ontario curriculum. So again, that would be an okay, present, uh, an okay placement because it looks very different from a public education system. And finally, I just wanted to mention that the faculty at Laurier often have students work with them in their alternative placements. And some will be doing research, some plan events. We had an amazing event this fall that was planned with a lot of support from last year's alternative placement students. We had a, a, a high school day for um, our EDI coalition, and we brought high school students to Laurier to introduce them to the faculty of education and what it means to be a teacher to get them to think about that when they're in high school. So that was part of their alternative placement. So this is a very broad area, lots of huge opportunities here and lots of different but really interesting learning about your place in the world of education in the community. Finally, I'll talk a little bit about our international placements. You can see the list of possible places that we've been to in the past. There are five countries listed there. And this year we're planning uh, two different spots. We're planning a Egypt trip and an Italy trip. These are in one block and they happen after practicum two in March, April. So both of those uh, trips will leave at that point for three weeks and students sign up for those, and uh, there is a cost involved with, with that, uh, but we organize a placement in those two countries, and students go and work in schools there. So it's a really unique opportunity. You can see some pictures of our students having been uh, to Nepal on the top right, and uh, Haiti on the top left, and the bottom picture is the picture of the school that's located in Cairo, uh, in Egypt, where we've been going for a number of years. So that's the international placement. Again, it can be um, different every year. And as I mentioned earlier, uh, certainly the health situation worldwide has stopped that from happening over the past couple of years. So it isn't something that is a guarantee, but it's something that we work really hard to try and provide. And, and as I mentioned, we are going to two different spots this coming year. I believe this means it's my turn to take over again. Uh, so other useful information. Uh, I am going to note, though, uh, I have had it pointed out that apparently one of our slides didn't quite get updated. It, there is a 500 word limit now on your experience profile questions. So my apologies for that um, slight oversight uh, when we were editing the slides and getting everything, all the information together. So it is a 500 word in um, limit. So other useful information about applying to the program. Uh, our schedule, um, classes are normally held between 8.30 a.m. to uh, 3.30 p.m. Um, and sorry, that has not, that slide apparently did not uh, get updated either. I'm not sure what's happening with our um, slide uh, deck. I, there might be a little bug in the issue that I'm looking at. So our classes have been this year held between 8.30 and 4 p.m. on Tuesdays, Wednesdays, Thursdays, and Fridays. Except in Brantford, they have only been on Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Fridays this year, but that's going to change a little bit for next year. You're usually on campus um, no more than three days a week unless you choose to have all four, your classes over the four days. Uh, a few of the courses are in the evenings, so teachables and electives are in the evenings. Uh, and some of the required courses are also in the evenings and that those courses run from four to seven, uh, unless they're an online course. So many of our evening courses are online uh, and those would be running from five to eight. So you have some time to get home afterwards. Um, 
In 21-22, teacher candidates were in schools on Tuesdays, um, and the Wednesdays were discretionary days, but now with a more flexible program, uh, you will be in schools on Mondays, and um, you can choose a discretionary day on the Waterloo campus based on your schedule. In Brantford, because you're in a cohort, your schedule is designed for you. So you'll be able to see what your schedule is and you'll follow your cohort through the program, except for some of the courses where we mix the PJs and JIs together so that you can get to know everybody who's on your campus. So things are a little bit different. You'll see that we've shifted a few things to try and make the program a little more flexible um, and to allow for some diversity in your interactions on the Waterloo campus uh, and getting to know a lot more of the people. As you can see, the program on the Waterloo campus is a little bigger, uh, but in Brantford, we have this nice tidy cohort that you can get to learn and work with them. So this is only our second year of offering the Brantford campus, so you will have uh, second years on campus with you as well. You bring your own device um, and it must meet the minimum standards. You can see that on your, the website. Um, orientation this year takes place during the first two weeks of classes in September. Uh, we're still working out the orientation schedule, but it will take place in September uh, so that you have the opportunity to learn about the program uh, before you really get into classes in the field. A really important piece is that um, the vulnerable sector check is required prior to the first day of orientation. So making sure that you have that by August 30th is important. Now, please don't go out and request it now. Wait until um, closer to May because you need to have it valid within the last year. So, but it's really important that you star this and make sure you don't forget because you cannot start attending any practicum days without a vulnerable sector check. So um, Microsoft Office 365 is offered to students. Uh, so once you become a Laurier student, you will be able to download and uh, install this on your computer. We do use Office 365 and Outlook for our emails. Uh, so you have the access to Office 365 throughout the program while you're in at Laurier. So making sure you have a device that can run this is important. Uh, and then you can submit assignments and do everything. It's available to you free of charge. So we no longer use Google products at Laurier. So just so that you're aware, it is Microsoft Office here. So what are the top reasons for choosing uh, Laurier? So the amount and quality of time in physical and virtual classrooms. Um, so almost 150 days. So between that 140, 150 days. We use a professional school model because you become an integral part of the teaching staff and you spend a lot of time in the schools developing those partnerships since you're in the same school for the entire year. Having the alternative placement allows you to have some exciting teaching and learning opportunities in something that isn't a traditional classroom so that you can learn more about the different opportunities that are available uh, with a Bachelor of Education degree. So even if you're not looking to be a teacher when you graduate, a Bachelor of Education degree gives you some really exciting opportunities. That diversity series that we talked about uh, is learning about how to adapt your teaching to each learner's backgrounds and needs. And this is a really important integral part of our program. And we really consider how to integrate that throughout the courses, but also talk about how to put it into your lesson plan so that you bring it into your classroom and practicum experiences. The courses are integrated and scaffolded. So we start in first year with giving you a lot of baseline knowledge that we continue to build on in each semester throughout the program. You're going to learn from the best um, class sizes. Uh, most of them with their interactive classes are very small. Uh, even when they're slightly bigger, uh, you have times and opportunities to interact with each other. You learn from subject matter experts and a lot of real world experiences. And what's really great is you also get to be in practicum experiences while you're in your classes. So you can apply the knowledge as you're going through the program. 
the flexible learning spaces um, that you have available to you in especially the first year with those courses where it's really important that you're hands-on like math and literacy. You need to interact with the materials. You need to be able to have those experiences so that you can help support students. We do have digital teaching and learning strategies, and we do have equipment that you can borrow, that you can bring into your classrooms like micro bits and robots uh, that you can take out and bring into your practicum experiences so you can integrate that. We have one of the highest practicum placement rates in the province for our graduates as well. Uh, so we also work within our program to support you towards your employment. So we offer workshops, workshops on resume writing and interview skills. We bring in principal panels. Uh, we do have career services available here at Laurier. And there are job opportunities on Navigator. So as we learn about things, we make sure that they're shared. We have a weekly newsletter that goes out that has opportunities for volunteering during the program and being able to engage and learn more beyond just the courses that we offer and the practical experiences. So um, our, Ontario, our placement uh, statistics, we don't have a, a lot from the recent years, but uh, our unemployment rates are down. Uh, our career pathway includes occasional teaching with decreasing length before contract and increasing daily work. So the teaching assignments for first year occasional teachers uh, has gone up um, since uh, 2016 to 2018, and that's across the province. So it's a good time to be a teacher. And even still, as uh, we mentioned, even Ben has an interview today, Lots of our students are getting interviews. Uh, school boards need teachers, so this is a good time to be part of a teacher education program. Uh, now, in 2020, we did a survey, and 100% of our BEd graduates were um, uh, had um, employment opportunities already. So uh, it was about half of the cohort uh, told us that they were employed in 2019. Uh, almost 75 or over 75 percent of our graduates responded, and 98 percent of them uh, were employed, and some of them were pursuing further education. Um, even some of them in our own Master of Education program afterwards. So we have a great employment rate. A lot of our students, because you spend so much time in a school and get to know the principal and the staff and the uh, teachers, you have an opportunity to make an impression before you graduate to help get graduates uh, employment after they finish. So, um, uh, our, we had a vaccine policy. We do um, have masking right now requirements for indoor, but we wanted to let you know that we did have fully back, have to have a fully vaccinated. Um, full, you had to be fully vaccinated prior to uh, this year. We have a checked vaccination status. However, um, our current vaccine policy is that, that this may come back depending on the uh, health restrictions. So keep an eye on that. We are masking indoors for our courses. So anything related to academic delivery uh, requires masking and we do encourage social distancing. And you can find out more about the COVID-19 policies and the up-to-date um, information on the website. Right. So I mean, I just want to reiterate what you're saying, Jennifer, is that the vaccine policy that's on this slide has been paused, right? Yes. It may be reinstated, but it has been paused. Yes. So we are very careful about making sure that our students are safe and healthy. Um, so we just wanted to let you know that that was the policy, but it has been paused at this time. That's right. So um, we are now going to leave some uh, room for questions. Uh, if you have questions related to recruitment and admissions, uh, you can send emails to eduadmissions at wluc.ca. So if you have a question 
that is really specific to your circumstance, you might want to send it to that and they can get you some information. Or if you have general inquiries about things that we have not um, answered already, uh, you can send them to education at wl.ca. And I know that the questions have been busily monitored, so I am going to see what questions um, have been asked uh, so that we can make sure that we answer some of those questions for you. So I have stopped the screen sharing so that you can see our lovely faces. Um, and I did see one amazing question that was asked, and I think I'd like to hear our Dean answer that out loud. Uh, and that was a question around, we've told you a lot this evening about uh, why you should choose Laurier, uh, but somebody asked, why would Laurier choose you? So I'm going to let our Dean, Dr. Cantalini-Williams, answer that question. Thank you. Uh, first of all, I do want to remind you that your application on OU, OUAC website um, must be submitted by December 1st. And then your experience profile is December 6th. So just uh, a caution that after December 1st, the OUAC site will probably be closed. Um, regarding your uh, assessment of your application, we do have, um, as was mentioned by Dr. Holm, a balance of looking at your grades and also your experience profile. Our experience profile has two questions now, and one does uh, address your motivation for becoming a teacher, and the other is related to your experiences, so both your lived experiences and also your experiences working with children and youth in any kind of teaching and learning setting. So what we do is we have our um, faculty, staff, our partners who are experienced teachers and principals look at the experience profiles. And using a rubric, they do assess your content to look for evidence of your commitment to teaching and learning. So one of the standards of practice for our profession is commitment to learning and commitment to students. So we're looking for evidence of the, your uh, motivation for becoming a teacher and also any experiences that you've had in the past. We are not necessarily uh, um, mechanically addressing those um, experiences. We're looking at them in a holistic manner. We're also looking to see how much diversity you have experienced or how many diverse experiences you have been involved in with diverse learners, diverse teaching experiences, uh, different settings. So those are some of the things that we value as educators. Again, um, it will be an assessment that's done with the tool, but by uh, an experienced professional. And uh, we will be looking at the standards of practice that relate to commitment to students and student learning. Um, what is your experience in the profession, anything related to the profession, um, what are your, your examples of ongoing learning, and how um, have you demonstrated that uh, wanting to become a teacher is not an afterthought, but is something that you've been planning on, uh, and that you've made a serious commitment to this profession. I hope that helps to answer your question. Um, I did put that response in the chat, and uh, it, it is definitely um, challenging to, to make that assessment on our part, but we do value the perceptions of experienced educators in determining um, what the experience profile score looks like. Okay, hope that helps. I'll be asked, did it create more questions? Um, I think you're looking at the verifiers or the references. We put the references there as um, just a fallback. So if we need clarification, if we need to uh, contact a reference, we will, but it's very unlikely that we'll contact your references. So don't worry about that. Um, and also 
a response by February 1st, we do send out offers and the offers will be um, obvious to you and you can then make your decision about whether you're going to accept our offer. Thank you. Um, uh, Bruce, you were monitoring the questions. Are there any that came up that we should be answering live? Uh, there are a number of questions, Jennifer, in terms of uh, <clears throat> applications. So a uh, number of questions around how many, how many students apply in the past, what's the ratio of acceptance to um, applicants, and, uh, and questions about ratios between Brantford and Waterloo. Are there certain teachables in Brantford versus Waterloo? Questions like that. Okay, that was a bit of a theme. Uh, great. So um, you can uh, apply to both programs. Um, the Brantford campus, we have not done an application process for. This is only our second year with a campus on the Brantford campus. Um, and last year we didn't have an application because we opened the program very close to the start. So our Waterloo students were offered the opportunity to go to Brantford. So this will be the first time that we have applicants. So we don't have any data on how many people will apply, um, but we are looking to fill a minimum of 60 spots in Brantford. So 30 for PJ and 30 for JI. Uh, there are some teachables. So history and geography are only at the Brantford campus. Uh, the other teachables are offered at the Brantford campus with the exception of mathematics that is only offered at the Waterloo campus. Uh, in Waterloo, uh, we tend to get a healthy number of applications, um, usually over a thousand. Um, this year, we're looking at 190 um, students, or 180 students, so about 90 in each cohort uh, in uh, Waterloo. So, Waterloo is not a cohort model. Uh, you, once you are accepted into Waterloo, then you get to choose kind of your schedule a little bit more based on when those courses are offered during the day. So you'll get a registration packet in the summer. But in Brantford, you will be told um, for the most part when your courses are, and they'll be on set days, uh, and you'll have a discretionary day or two, depending on um, the term. So I think that answers those questions. And another common question too, Jennifer, that maybe should be addressed in a public forum sure. um, around the 500 character limit. Uh, some people were asking questions about, um, you know, what's the minimum number of words they should use. And in, the, in one of the answers, uh, um, Dr. Cantalini Williams noted that if you go over 500, you cannot click the submit button. <laughs> so things that uh, you know an applicant probably should be aware of. I don't know if you want to speak to that at all, maybe a little further. Sure, wonderful. Um, so yes, I, I apologize that um, I didn't catch the character, the change from a character limit to a word limit this year with the system. Uh, so it is 500 words. And yes, if you go over, you will not be able to submit your experience profile. So the site will tell you. Um, there isn't a minimum, but uh, thinking about what Dr. Cantalini Williams talked about in terms of what we're looking for, be thorough with your answers and thinking about the experiences that you're bringing to this program to help us get a sense of who you are as an applicant. Um, since we're going to be evaluating those using a rubric, we really need as much detail as possible. So you, you don't want to go over 500 words, but you also don't want to go so small that we can't get a sense of what are those experiences that you're bringing to this program that would make you an amazing candidate uh, to be a Golden Hawk. Um, so uh, I did see a question was um, around uh, if you apply to both PJ and JI, uh, is there a possibility that you won't get accepted into your first ranked? So when we look at our applications, uh, each of the cohorts, so the PJ Waterloo, PJ Brantford, are separate application um, groups. So you're ranked based on that particular application. So there is potential that you would be accepted into one of the 
four programs um, and not the other. So they're all separate. So it depends on how many individuals apply uh, and a lot of other factors. So once we get all of your information and your scores, we compare your P GPA with your experience profile. They are ranked based on each of the different programs. Um, so you might get accepted to one and not maybe the other one that you apply for. So I did see a question around teachables um, uh, with the JI teachables and a question around that. So uh, obviously right now the sector really is looking for mathematics teachables and French teachables. So we do look very closely at those applications uh, because that is something that the field needs right now. Um, so we do look at those ones in particular. And I did see a couple of people try and go off mute, so I'm going to be quiet and let them do it. Oh. Uh, there was a, a question on averages. Um, you know, it talked about the minimum 70%. And, uh, and I hope it's an appropriate answer, but what I said was it's really difficult to quantify on average in terms of that because A, it could be based on applicant, applicant pool, um, but also it's based on the fact that the experience profile uh, ways for a big part of the application. So um, a very strong experience profile will benefit a student uh, tremendously. So it's hard to really quantify a number in that. Absolutely, I completely agree with that answer. That's true. I was also going to mention um, that I didn't, when we were talking about our review of the experience profiles, as Dr. Holm mentioned, um, please be thorough. But also um, do remember that it's educators that are looking at your profile and uh, we have a tendency to look at spelling, grammar, and uh, we do uh, care that you took time to attend to your writing style. So proofread your experience profile and um, even get someone else to look at it for you and make it be the best polished version that you possibly can. So I did see someone ask a question around the clarification on a discretionary day. So um, this would be a day that's built into the schedule where you wouldn't have classes, you wouldn't have meetings on campus, and you wouldn't be required to attend your placement day so that you could take that day. So in Brantford, the, day, the discretionary days are built into the schedule because you have a set schedule that you would follow. In Waterloo, uh, it depends on how you register for your classes, when and if you get a discretionary day. So you could decide to stretch your classes out over the four days um, in order to have fewer classes on a single day or compress them into um, two or three days, depending on the term. So some terms you will have a minimum of three days on campus um, and some terms you might have two. Are there any other questions that we see in the chat that we should try and answer live? Yeah, I did see a couple of questions come up around Catholicity. And uh, we asked the question when um, students are accepted in the program, they do a, a board preference form. And that question has been tweaked a little bit over the years, but we ask uh, people if they're interested in teaching a Catholic board, but they need to be prepared to demonstrate uh, their Catholicity in terms of um, a letter, a pastoral letter of reference uh, is an example of that. And that's a, a commitment in terms of working with our Catholic partner boards. Um, and every Catholic partner board is a little different, but students do need to answer that question if they want to be considered for a Catholic placement. Thank you. Yes, yeah, so most of the classes are structured into three hour blocks, um, not hour, hour and a half, or an hour and a half blocks. So they're, most of them are three hour blocks. The professional learning seminars are a little different though. Uh, so some of those uh, are a little more flexible and shorter hours, but you'll know those dates and times uh, from your course outlines on those. But the majority of the classes in the program are a three hour block.
So for the experience profile, yes, please ex uh, include experiences in classroom settings with older youth or adults. Um, they are still experiences that have led you to wanting to be a teacher. Uh, so those would be considered uh, so that we see that commitment to teaching, commitment to education. I don't know the answer to that question. Um, does Luria have an on-site daycare? I don't believe so. I think it's an off-site daycare, but there's a wait list for it, if I'm correct, remembering correctly. Maria seems to be nodding a little for me. Yes, I think um, in both campuses, they use uh, daycare centers that are associated with Laurier, but not a Laurier on-site daycare center. I think with um, Laurier Waterloo, it's Emmanuel Daycare Center. And um, I would say that in Brantford, a child care center that is affiliated with the YMCA would be the child care center there. Uh, so I'm going to let the practicum office talk about this. Um, could you possibly talk a bit about the current trial with grade nine and 10 placements? That was a question in there. Sure, I can, I can speak to that. Uh, what we're doing is we are uh, this year at the, if you remember back when I talked about practicum five, which was the 10 week practicum, what we're doing is we are using part of that practicum to run a trial and a pilot project where students would finish practicum five, they would do four weeks at 100% in their K-8 to school, and then they would go for the last half of that practicum into a secondary school. They would only be teaching grade nine and 10, and they would only be teaching it if they were a junior, a junior intermediate student in their intermediate teachable subject area. So we did have some questions earlier about history, for example. If I'm a, if my teachable subject is history, where would I go, Brantford or, or Waterloo? So it's that teachable subject that an intermediate level student could possibly do in secondary. So this year it's optional as a pilot project and once we have run through that pilot we will be looking at what does that look like going forward so you would have seen bruce's answer to one of the questions is that we're running it as a pilot and we going forward we're not sure yet what that looks like so hopefully that answers your question about the pilot uh, as i said it's voluntary and uh, only for those junior intermediate level students who wish to to have that experience Thank you. Um, so the, uh, the question comes up every year about choosing your own board. No, you need to be in a school board that uh, we have partnered with as part of your placement experience. And uh, you do get to fill out a preference form, uh, but we have to look at where, what you are required to do um, for your certification, because at the end of this, we have to certify you. So there are certain things we have to do, um, as well as availability of placements to figure out which board you'll be placed in during your practicum blocks. So although you fill out a preference, it's not a guarantee. Um, alternative placements, as Gary mentioned, cannot be done in an Ontario, uh, a school board that is publicly funded or um, teaches with the Ontario curriculum. So um, you cannot do an alternative placement at a different school board other than the um, partner boards. It would have to be an alternative type of experience. And yes, you are required to have your own transportation to the placements. So uh, whatever that happens to be. 
that would be on a, a requirement for you. So whether you need a vehicle or you have transportation, um, that is your choice, but you would be required to find your way to your placement. Uh, so there is an example of a typical weekly class schedule. Um, you can also find that online. Um, so typically Mondays, uh, you'll be in your placement. Um, and then it's either two or three days a week that you will be in classes of the Tuesday to Friday. Um, but if you look on the website, there is a sample schedule to give you an idea of timing. It changes slightly year to year, but at least that will give you an idea of what it will look like. Do we see any other questions that we might want to answer live in our last 12 minutes? I can just speak a little bit to the French piece, Jennifer. Fantastic. There, there are a couple of questions on that. Um, <clears throat> So in terms of the French proficiency um, test that we run, we're looking for a proficiency in oral language, of course, reading, writing, uh, usually a DELF level B, B2. <clears throat> so some of the questions came up where uh, it could have been an immersion student in high school, but they hadn't taken any French courses in university. Could they be acceptable? Really depends, again, on your level of proficiency. They, it's every individual story is different out there. Some people may continue to speak French at home, or maybe they have uh, um, opportunities to speak French. Of course, uh, as anyone knows, you need to use it or lose it. So if you haven't been speaking French or reading French or listening to French for a number of years and you want to apply, um, make sure you brush up on your French uh, so that you're competent in the language. And the purpose of that is not to be punitive. We want to provide um, bilingual educators who are capable of teaching in a French environment. If they're going to be a French language instructor, that's very important to us. So we do have a fairly uh, rigorous standard in terms of that. But B2, again, is not uh, something um, that's impossible. It just requires a dedication and commitment to the French language. And that's what we're looking for. So uh, some people talk about the application process, very clear what you need in terms of um, courses, course loads for the JI French Teachable and the PJ has a variety of different windows out there that may apply to you. Just be, understand the fact that we need to, you need to be able to demonstrate your proficiency to us. It's important so that we can make sure that we're providing great candidates to our schools. Well, there seems to have been a bit of a lull in questions, and I think we've answered a lot of them. Um, so just a reminder, you can reach out to edu admissions at wlu.ca uh, if you have specific questions to your circumstances that we can answer. Um, and you, if you have other general inquiries that we weren't able to answer this evening, please reach out to education at wlu.ca. Uh, and we'd be happy to answer your questions. We thank you so very much for being here this evening and being part of this webinar and your interest in our program. And we would love to talk with you more if you have more questions. Um, so I am going to say thank you uh, on behalf of our entire panel. And I'm going to thank our wonderful panelists for their time and expertise in sharing with you about the Laurier program. And hopefully we will see your applications very soon. Uh, and we look forward to possibly welcoming you to either the Waterloo or Brantford campus in the fall. So thank you very much. Have a wonderful evening and we look forward to hearing from you.